Ladies and gentlemen, welcome not to the workshop, but to London. I've left the depths of North Norfolk for the city. There are people here I haven't seen any anvils. Not a great amount of iron work, but that is to change. I'm here in London for two reasons. Reason number two is an event that I'm attending this weekend. Blacksmithing event, knife making event, that type of thing. Reason number one, museums and swords. <laughs> I am having so much fun, I'm learning a lot. Okay, this is a 900s Viking sword. Have a look at that. What is astonishing that I have not known and the conversations that I'm having with the other people on this little trip are so enlightening. And seeing swords in person for the first time, the biggest takeaway is have a look at that. Have a look at how thin that is. These weapons were so much lighter than I ever assumed. They weren't designed to be lumps of metal that you swing and you let the weight do the work. They were meant to be light and agile and able to move fast. This is incredible. I'm in the second room here at the British Museum and already it feels like with the conversations that I've had that this day of finally getting and seeing historical pieces up in close. Today is a bookmark, I am sure it is a flag in the ground in the journey of my life of creating things because I'm certain the pieces that I create in the future, I think they're gonna be a lot better than they were until now. Okay, so now we're in the Roman Britain section. Here are some cool tools from Roman Britain. Check out that awesome fire dog. How cool is that little ox head? Is for a big old fire though, that is the truth. That concludes a little tour of the British Museum. We're gonna have a little pit stop and then it's on to the Wallace Collection. And it is in the Wallace Collection that I believe we're getting a little behind the scenes action and actually getting a little up closer to some swords. Okay, a little time has passed. That's not a sign. There we go. So we are in the Wallace Collection and they've put aside a room just for us, us, this group. And they've taken six swords out of their collection for everybody to look at. But this is the cool thing and this is the really exciting thing about the group of people I'm with is these people, they're not messing around. They're not just trying to make YouTube videos like I am. They're serious about trying to make replica swords and understand the principles of sword making and the real core essence of it. So when they're making their swords, they are the most accurate representation of the real thing. They're not just looking. What they're doing is they're rolling out paper, micrometer in hand, and they're going to measure and document every piece of the swords so that then they have the exact artifact to go off of when they're making another piece. This is super cool.
The packing them up, that was really, really cool to see the real stuff, the historical examples. Big thank you to the Wallace Collection for letting all of us come in and have a look. So we just walked into another part of the Wallace Collection and there are daggers everywhere. This is unbelievable. Look at how stunning that is. How phenomenal is that craftsmanship? That stunning helmet, look at it. This is some seriously inspiring stuff. Look at that. Look at those scissors. What a stunning and ingenious construction. This whole museum is filled with incredible stuff. Look at how glorious that dagger looks. Have a look at these German 16th century swords. Look at the beauty, the craftsmanship in the basket hilt. The Stunning, stunning, unbelievable work here. This is a three-edged blade. Three edges. And that one there, it's got four. It's square. Look at the lightness and the elegance of this basket hilt. The craftsmanship involved to create that is unbelievable. I mean, to me, it is just completely unfathomable that it is possible today, let alone when this stuff was made, which was a long time ago. This is mind-blowing, truly mind-blowing. One of the biggest takeaways of this trip has been the scale of the pieces. Almost everything appears to be much thinner and much smaller than I thought it was. The blade lengths are longer, the handles are smaller and narrower. The blade thickness is narrower. It's thinner, there is, they are lighter. And when you look at something like that, it's just begging to be used. And it's the scale that allows that to be possible. That handle grip, that's only about three and a half inches. It's a lot smaller than it looks like. This is, this is endless. Endless stuff. Look at this. To think the amount of work that's involved to craft such delicate flowers in that, in all these pieces, let alone make these thin, Thin steel blades and these stunningly wire wrapped handles. So much amazing stuff. I've had a lot of people say, Alec, you're hard on yourself with your projects. You don't need to be so concerned. And I absolutely do. Because the history that comes before me picking up a hammer and deciding to make something, the history before, the tradition before, the craftsmanship before, was to such a high standard to hold myself to any less. It's just an insult to everybody that slaved away at a grinder, everybody that slaved away at a forge to make these incredible pieces. This is just so inspiring. With what we would consider basic tools, our forefathers, our ancestors were making items of this quality. This is what it's about. They were not majorly different than us. And this is why I want to keep getting better at what it is that I do and I want to keep rigorously critiquing it because the people that make this stuff are just people that had a greater degree of discipline at their craft and were more committed to doing it right. They had higher standards. And that's what it's all about. And, then, and they pursued excellence and they were rigorously training for excellence. And it shows because the craftsmen that made these incredible daggers and these incredible rapiers. They've got work that's in a museum and hundreds of years later, some goofy kid with glasses is just fangirling over it all. So that's me. I want to extend my sincere gratitude to the Wallace Collection for letting us come have a look and Owen Bush of Bushfire Forge for inviting me and the rest of us on this tour of this incredible museum and getting to see behind the scenes. It was an honor. It was incredibly inspiring and I am truly, truly grateful. Thank you guys for coming along. I can't wait to see you on Monday on the next episode. Hit subscribe if you're new and I'm going to see you then. And don't forget, grab yourself one of these process teas because you know what? They are just a whole lot of fun. See you very soon. Bye. Bye.